Good morning, Living Hope. Welcome to church. Let's stand up to our feet. We're going to sing some songs of worship. It's a special day. We're going to pray a lot. We're going to worship a lot. We're going to hear a word. And God's going to move because he's here. Amen? Let's worship. I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises in his face. Well, there's a sound. There is a sound. And I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks the room where people pray, where we hear worship in His
welcome to our prayer Sunday. A couple weeks ago, Pastor Jess just sensed that the world, the moment we're in, we needed to set aside a day and seek the Lord. So today's service is going to look a little bit different. It's going to look a little bit like a prayer Sunday. Doesn't that sound exciting? We're going to come back tonight if you're able and we want you here 6 p.m. We're going to have a prayer service. It's going to be incredible. And then right now we're going to hear something. But as we go back into worship, we have a couple stations in the back that if you want to engage in prayer, we have boxes that you can drop complaints. No, not complaints at our snack, our songs, or our preaching off limits. But maybe you want to tell God, hey, the world that my kids are being raised in doesn't feel very fair, God. You can write that in there. Maybe you got a diagnosis that doesn't seem like you thought your life was gonna go. You can write that in there. You can tell God whatever complaint you have and he can handle it, leave it anonymous. And then we're gonna actually cover the canvases back there with these complaints we're offering to God. We have a cross that you can nail something that's just keeping you in bondage. Maybe it's bitterness, maybe it's an addiction, maybe it's a habit you just can't get freed from. Nail it to the cross, give it to King Jesus. And then in this hour, we're asking that the light of Christ would shine. Pray for somebody who doesn't know Jesus, who hasn't experienced his goodness. Light a candle and say, come on, God, let your light shine in their life. You can do that all through worship. But right now, what I'd like us to do before we go into this incredible uh, prayer we're going to hear from these gentlemen, if you would, just as we're entering this day of prayer, would you just close your eyes and lift your hands and just like we read today in Amos, seek the Lord and live. And right now we're declaring, as we seek the Lord, new life, fresh life is beginning to come to your church. A renewing, a renewal, a reviving is coming to your church in this hour. A renewal, a reviving is coming to our city in this hour. A renewal, a reviving is coming to our state in this hour. We're seeking the Lord today and there is going to be a release of life in this place. There's going to be a fresh outpouring of life in this place. And so church, I'm calling you today seek the Lord seek the Lord seek the Lord and there's a promise that comes at the end of that chapter he says seek the Lord and live and then he says seek the good and the good we long for for our city is gonna be a result of people who sought the Lord and experienced his life and then go into their city and seek the good so seek the Lord and now just in this spirit of prayer, I want us to stay standing and I want us to agree with the prayer that's about to be prayed. Oh, my soul, bless. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord and all that is within me in every place and with all my heart, bless his holy name. Don't forget he is the God who forgives. Don't forget he is the God who heals. Don't forget he is the God who redeems. You crown me with faithfulness and steadfast love. You satisfy me with good things. You renew, you renew me to catch the wind. Oh my soul, bless. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord and all that is within me, every place and with all my heart, bless his holy name. As far as the east is from the west, you remove our sins. As father, you have compassion on us. As a faithful father, you remember us. You are from eternity to eternity. You are faithful to those who fear you. You are faithful to the legacy of those who follow you. Don't forget us. 
establish your kingdom here and now. Don't forget us. Let your will be done here and now. Don't forget us. No wrath, mercy. All the angels bless. And all the angels and armies bless the Lord. All our works and words in every place and in every church, yes, at Living Hope. Bless the Lord. Come on, Living Hope. Bless his holy name. And when it moves and when it prays, where stood a wall now stands away, where every promise is amen. We can sing that again this morning when he moves and when we pray. And when he moves and when we pray, where stood a wall now stands away, where every promise is amen. We'll sing it one more time when he moves and when we pray. And when he moves and when we pray. Where stood a wall now stands away where every promise is amen. Oh, make no mistake today. And when it moves, make no mistake. The vows of hell begin to shake. Oh, hell the Lord, oh, hell the King. Hey, let's give glory in. Hey. 
Let him in this morning. Open up your windows. Open up your hearts. And let the light in. Let the light open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. And let the light in. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Let the light in. Let his light shine. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Oh, light in. Let the light in. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Let the light Voices rise, all creation cries, singing out in endless Alleluia. From this moment on, join with heaven's song, singing out in endless
is rise all creation cries singing out an endless alleluia from this moment on we join with heaven's song singing out an endless Church, I want to stretch some of you just a little bit here at the communion table. We have a tendency to fill every moment with some sort of music, some sort of word, something just to kind of fill the air. And I, I want to challenge us just to be silent a little bit before the Lord. So I'm going to read some scripture and then I'm, I'm going to ask that God would speak to you. And I'm just going to lead you through this scripture and just let God speak to your heart. Listen, listen to what he is saying. And if something comes to mind, don't try to press it out, but just lean into, God, what is it you're trying to say with this? So we've been all around this psalm this morning. My soul, bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. My soul, bless the Lord. Do not forget his benefits. He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with faithful love and compassion. He satisfies you with good things. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. He forgives all our iniquity. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgives our sins. So, Let's just take a moment and ask God, God, reveal anything to us that we need to confess. Father God, just speak, speak, Lord, to our hearts. Let us listen to you. Sin has caused so much pain in our life. And it's not just the things that we've done against God, but the, the pain that sin has caused others. And so, Lord, this pain has literally disrupted our soul. Whatever pains that sin and hurt and brokenness have caused in your life, either yours or other people, just... Let God reveal that to him, to you, and then just we're going to bring it to the cross here in just a minute. So just everything and everybody we're giving to him. God, what pain has been caused by iniquity? all your diseases what because of the fall what diseases do we need to bring to the cross either in you or someone you know
redeems your life from the pits? What are the pit of circumstances that are just plaguing you that you need to bring to the cross today? Relationships, economics, jobs. crowns you with his ascent, his covenant love, his faithful love, his commitment to you. What are the things in your life that are keeping you from giving your full allegiance to the King of Kings? do with those sins, those pains that are in our life? All those things that we just thought of, what do we do? Look up, church. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We bring it to him. We bring it to you, Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus broke bread and he said, this is my body given to you. He, he gave it to you, to you, that you might have life. Father God, we, we come to you. We give everybody and everything to you. God, we give everybody and everything that is plaguing us to you. We ask you to take it from our hands. We can't do it. God, all these sins that we're holding inside, God, we bring it to the cross. There's nothing we can do if it wasn't for you. So, God, we just bring this all to the cross. Thank you for giving your body to us. supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. It's the reminder that there is no, there's nothing, no person, no thing that Jesus won't overcome for you. He, 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 he went and gave his life for you. Father, we bless this cup in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. Church, let's read this together. When we drink the cup of blessing, aren't we taking into ourselves the blood, the very life of Christ? And isn't it the same with the loaf of bread? We break and eat. Don't we take it into ourselves, the body, the very life of Christ? Amen. You may be seated and we can see our new trailer. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. O oh Lord, what is man that you regard him, or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Flash forth the lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch your hands from on high and rescue me and deliver me from the many waters, from the hand of the foreigners whose mouths speak lies and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Well, good morning, Living Hope. How's everybody doing today? 
awesome. It's a great summer day, finally. Hey, Monique and I get to pray for Pastor Jess's service and sermon today. So this morning at 7 a.m., if you received a text from the church, and it gave, gave you a prayer already to pray with your family. If you have not had that opportunity to pray with your family, here's a great opportunity because we're going to do it right now. Almighty God, we ask your blessing on today's day of prayer. Lord, may we come ready to give you a blessing. Bring to mind the many ways you have helped us in the past. Thank you for your faithful love and compassion. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, the Messiah, to rescue us from our sins. Thank you for giving us your spirit to fill us and guide us. Father, we pray for your continued renewal in our life. Today, Lord, we also seek your continued renewal of your church family at Living Hope. Restore, renew, and revive us. Lord, we are praying for the fire to fall down today. May that fire reach our hearts through the word brought by Pastor Jess today, Lord. May the light shine through us from that fire. We are claiming that dry bones will be risen again, Lord Jesus. We are claiming your mighty power. Abba Daddy, we bless you. Jesus, mighty King, we hail your name. We thank you, Lord. Bring the fire to our hearts, Lord, so that we can leave this place and pour out to those all around us. We say this in your mighty name. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Need to have them pray for me more often. That was terrific. Wow. It's been a, it's been a great morning. I want to thank everybody that's participated so far. We wanted this morning, yeah, to feel like a morning service for sure, but more we wanted to make it feel like prayer, so we're kind of praying all the way through uh, this day. Uh, Pastor David, I really loved your communion there. That was like one sweet time, and then when he, like, it was so funny, I would have thought there would have been things when you're asking us to meditate that I'd have just been blank on. Just every single thing, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit's giving me something. And then the lift, uh, I, and he says, behold the lamb, meaning that everything we have going on in our hearts, the lamb of God will take and carry for us. So just been beautiful worship, the guys that prayed that song, so wonderful. We're also beginning a new series today, and so we're, we're, we're pushing at some things. Reminds me of a kind of some research that Ale gave me. He said that they did some research on the lifespan of people and they're looking at marriages and they discovered that women who carried a little weight lived longer than men who happened to mention it to them and so I feel a little bit like that today that uh, it's kind of dangerous when sometimes you're you know you're opening up and saying maybe we should look at our hearts a little bit maybe we should let Jesus lean into us and touch us certain place. We're going to do through the summer, we're going to do a series called Psalmed. And uh, when you're in pain, what should you do? Well, you should complain. But if we don't complain right, that complaining will turn into some pretty bad stuff. So what we want to do is we want to walk you through how to complain. Because I think most of us don't get our complaints done right. And because we don't get our complaints done right, uh, we end up living with some things that we d don't have to and we shouldn't have to uh, carry. Today we want to start, obviously, with Psalms, uh, not a complaint Psalms. We want to start with Psalms 103 just for a few moments here. I want to start off with this story. Uh, Mark, a guy by the name of Mark uh, Brokoff tells of a time when he's uh, in the hospital. Excuse me, he's at home with his wife and she wakes him up. She's nervous about the baby that's within, within her. She's had a few kids. She cannot sleep. She's very nervous. Something was wrong. They go through a sleepless night, and they go to the hospital, and they're at the hospital. The doctor puts a stethoscope on her stomach, her belly, and has those looks on his face that would alarm any mother and father. They move her into an ultrasound, and they do the ultrasound, and 
she'd had a couple of twins and she'd had another child and so she knew what ultrasounds looked like and she knew what was not coming up on that screen. She knew that there was not a heartbeat. Then all of a sudden they moved to take a fully formed child, I think Sylvia or Sarah, can't remember the child's name, brought her out and she was without life. Mark was looking at baby without life and he had some things that were going on in his mind. He was wondering. He was wondering if his wife would ever be happy again. He would wonder if he could overcome the sorrow and the difficulty of this moment to ever be the pastor that he should be. He wondered how his kids, his boys at home, would take such news. He wondered about an uncertain future, and he began to just fill with pain. I've been with people when they tell me that I've got a little pain in their body. A good friend tell me that a little tiny pain in his body. He said, sure, it's nothing, but I'm going to go to the doctor with it. And he goes and has a test done and a test done. And he's certain in one of the tests that one of the nurses or one of the technicians sees something and something is wrong. And then he has to go in and he has to sit in the doctor's office where the doctor is telling him, you have fourth stage out of control beyond our ability to help you. Cancer. And then in that moment, all of our minds begin to race and we wonder about our future and we wonder if we will make it. Had a good friend felt like he was a very good man. He died a horrible death of leukemia. I remember him preaching one night and saying, God, I am a good guy. And there's a lot of wicked people in the face of the earth. And I'm, I'm getting ready to die young and they're getting ready to live a long life. And in essence, he was saying, because my life is so good, spare me and kill somebody else you don't need. But he died. And so you wonder, how do we encounter these things that are going on in life and get through them? Lived a long time. People come and ask me, what's this like? What's that like? I've seen 20% on inflation. I've seen gas lines. I've seen fuel shortages. I've seen wars. I've seen a whole lot of things. But I've never seen it in a world where the American century was crumbling before our eyes. I've never beheld that world. That world, when you live in a stronghold, such as America, that everything in the world is slanted towards America, it affords you a certain amount of thriving. Even the most poor among us, even the most mistreated among us, if you've traveled the world, have lived better than anywhere else on the planet. And now, for the first time in my life, we are living in a world where that stronghold is crumbling before our eyes. And so you would ask me, what does our future look like? And I would say, I don't know what our future looks like. Will it look like the past? Don't know. When all of these kinds of things happen, it's really hard to predict the future. It might go well for us. It might not go well for us. But down deep in your heart, you feel like there's something in culture that is dead and going to give birth to something that is not living the way it was in its past. And you start wondering, what will my life be like in the future? What will I do? You start thinking about that. And then you know what you have before you know it. You have a creeping anxiety down deep within your heart. An anxiousness. Our children are just incredibly overshadowed with an anxiousness. Because in the breaking down of a stronghold, what goes happens is we decentralize everything and we go into what? we go into individualism. So the very culture that gave us the power to be individualistic and be selfish and think about ourselves and find our own purpose is the very culture that we crumble to get to our individualism. We've not been here before. And so what do people do? And let's just look at Christians. What do especially Christians do? We try to find things to do to cover our anxiety. If there, was, if there was just something, maybe I can go on a trip. Maybe I can buy this. Maybe I can engage in a ministry. Maybe I can move to another state. Anything to get me out from my, uh, from my anxiety. And so people are doing all this kind of stuff. But I want to tell you something. There's something here to stay. 
Something is birthing right now. I've been talking about it for months and months and months. Life will not be like it is today, a year from now and a year after that. When this happened in Rome, you know what they went into? They went into the Dark Ages. Are you predicting Dark Ages? I am not. I'm just saying what was is not what will be. And yet, for you, it should not mean that you and I have to live in some kind of anxiousness. It shouldn't mean that we should have to live in some kind of fear. It should mean that there is something that should happen to us in God that should revolutionize us and enable us enable us to endure through things. I could give you names of great church fathers that lived in the toughest times, and they were brilliant men that stood stood in God and had tremendous joy. There's some lessons I've learned from pain. I've learned that pain cannot be tameable. I cannot tame it. Pain is a lot like sin. It has to be eradicated or it messes with you. Sin is something you have to mortify because if you don't mortify it, if you don't kill it, and then something else about pain, it always wants to come back and revisit you again and again and again. I'm talking mostly about the pain of anxiety. It's just, it's just that way. And yet God wants to take pain and he wants you to deal with it so it can be transformed into making you something that you thought you could never, ever be. People don't process pain well. If I sit down with a lot of people and I start talking to you about my pain, uh, all of a sudden people's face will get visibly uncomfortable. They will seek to give you the bright side of life. They will show you a scripture. They'll take you through a series of prayers that will make everything better. But having people sit down live the pain with you in America that is tough like when people tell me their pain and I'm busy I'm tempted to change the subject I'm tempted to create that awkward silence searching for something to do to get me out of having to be there with your pain mostly what I like to do is physically excuse myself I I never answer the phone for anyone but my wife, and she's calling right now. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a prank call, but it's my wife. You can't see the number. But the worst thing that I've done when it comes to people's pain is I offer lame optimism. Oh, you're going to be a better person. You're going to grow in Jesus. You will be able to help so many people after this is all over. Jesus mostly wants us to do this. He wants us to enter our pain and mortify it, kill it, and let it transform you. I want you to look up at the screen because I want you to look at how the psalms look. Okay, We have psalms, we have what I would call lament psalms and imprecatory psalms, so put that screen up there. If you look at lament psalms, there are 47 of them in the psalms, 47. If you look, uh, put up the next slide if you would, if you look up imprecatory psalms, there are 13. You can do your math. That's 60 psalms. A third of them, and I haven't included a few others that would deal with this, this issue of pain in life. In other words, the psalm is this tremendous book on how you and I deal with pain. Have you ever in your closet really let God have it for something? I mean, here's what happens to me. Here's how you know my prayer life is gone. When I'm in pain and I yell at my family, I cannot believe this is happening. And so I begin to complain to them. That is That is my moment and your moment of knowing something. I've not talked to God yet. Because when you got a complaint, I think God wants you to let it out of your mouth. And in over 60 psalms, he's teaching us how to do that. And so this summer, I want to work on that because I think Christian people should be the least anxious people in the world right now. I think they should be completely different. If you don't deal with your pain, then you will have dysfunctional emotions. And I kind of round these are what I call sad emotions. These kind of, these circle around six basic emotions. These are six basic negative emotions you feel. So sad emotions, sorrow, shame, anger, anxiety, despair, depression. If we don't deal with the pain in our life, all of a sudden these sorrows 
begin to form our inner life. And the greatest expression, I think, of, of this sadness is probably that one A word there, the anxiety word. The book of Psalm begins like this. Blessed is the man who walks, excuse me, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. You know who the wicked people are? Wicked people are people that cannot keep from straying. They're always leaving their allegiance to Jesus to go after something that will make them happy. That's what a wicked person is. doesn't matter if what they're chasing is good or bad. They're always leaving their allegiance in Christ to chase something that will make them happy. It says this. It says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of him who's saying, it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. Blessed is the guy who does not walk in that. Nor stands in the way of sinners. Sinners are, in my mind, are a little bit uh, interesting creatures. Because sinners are those who do not have, a, a, to be a, a sinner, to sin, is to miss the mark. In other words, they don't have the core of their existence following after Jesus. In fact, he goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The word law there is Torah. The word Torah comes from a word that means to draw back and shoot an arrow. Most scholars think that the best translation of that word law there would actually be Torah would actually be guidance blessed is the man who finds his guidance coming from God instead of constantly going off of that mark and chasing something else now you get down at the end of Psalms 1 and this is kind of important because I believe what the Psalms are trying to do is they're trying to tell us how to live a blessed life a non anxious life how to process pain how to, how, to, how to live in a world that we're in between. And we're in between right now. No matter what it seems like, we are definitely in between. We're in a world I haven't lived in before. The American century started long before I was born, even before uh, Charles Starr was born. This, is, this has been going a while now. And all of that is changing, and it will change for the whole world. But there is a rock on which God wants to plan, plant his people. And in order for, that, for us to be sustained on that rock, we need to process our pain. So the end of the psalm says this, I want you blessed, and you're blessed by following the guidance of Yahweh. And he says at the end of the psalm, therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment. Ooh, that's, that's bad, the wicked won't stand in judgment. He's saying, people, there are people who do stand in judgment. The people who continually stray are not those people. Meaning there are folks when the day of judgment comes and you say, well, like, is God judging the earth right now? I don't know if he's judging the world right now. I'm not God. But I'll tell you something. Some things that we have been sowing in the world are certainly coming back to judge us right now. We are certainly reaping some consequences of things that we have done in the world right now. He's trying to tell you this. There are people that he wants to raise up and when the day of judgment comes, he wants you standing. I'm calling out to you today. He wants you to stand in troubling days and in between days when we don't know where culture is going. He wants you to be able to stand. He's raising up and calling out to people who will stand. But we can't just let our pain just kind of kick around in our heart and live in sadness. We have to allow Jesus to be formed deeply within us. And then he says, and our sinners in the congregation of the righteous. And this psalm has been so true to me over the years because it is very difficult if you're not a righteous person to hang out in a local church it's just hard it's just hard to do that one of the things that really saddened me and i will say this now when when i pass on you know my kids will stand up and say look really love my dad love so much about my dad but this was you know this was kind of a disappointment to us they'll say that about me and i want them to my spiritual dad, great dad, taught me so much about the local church. But at the end of his life, was himself not committed to a local church. It deeply affected his ability to have Christ formed in him, formed in him at the end of his life. You guys, I want to tell you something. God wants to heal you. He wants you to be able to act out your fidelity in your marriage with your kids, with your friends, in your job, on and on it goes. This, he loves this. He loves fidelity of heart. He loves things to flow from this rich inner nature of, I just want to be committed with you and stay with you. and all. He loves that. 
This is what righteous people are able to do. They are able to remain standing in the congregation of the righteous. You know, we have children, children's camp, youth camp, junior high camps coming up. Let me just travel around here just for a moment. We don't do boxed curriculums here. You, the Pastor David was saying that you know they get kids coming to their v- VBS and they'd already know the verses because they've done the VBS all around town. That's not what we do here. We have spent money, those of us who are here, not taking raises and not doing other things to get the right staff here for you so we don't have to box up a curriculum and hand it to you. Because we believe that the most important thing going on in your children's life is their formation in Christ. Can I step on toes? Therefore, the spiritual formation of your very own children is far more important than the sport camp. Are you saying don't send them to sport camp? I'm saying no. If it interferes, you might have to find another one or they might not be able to go. Your children are looking at you. What's really important to you? If your child is good at sports, I hope they get their scholarship and everything else. But I want to tell you something. I know a lot of guys, I have my own cousin that was uh, was committed to Christ and now is about as lost as you can be on a, on a full ride scholarship. If you want your children you know, getting into some kind of sport or some great thing, I am suggesting to you, make sure the first step of your life is we care about the formation that goes on within right. you. I want my children to be blessed and in love with Jesus. I'm not saying don't do things, but I'm also saying that I believe that you can have it all walk with Jesus, and then fulfill anything that he wants you to fulfill. I'm just suggesting. So, well, you know, there's been some changes in leadership around here, and we don't know. I get it. Can I just say this for everyone that's taken a chance on first-year people? Thank you, and we deeply appreciate it. But I believe in these guys so much. I'm just calling on all of you. Rise up in this hour, and don't make some silly camp, no matter how noble the camp is, a priority over your children's formation. We are devoting our lives to this for you and with you. I just hope you would consider as this is going out this summer and we're trying to get everything started again after COVID, very hard because we we do have a new staff, so we're having to rebuild everything. I'd say give us a chance. Give us a chance to work with you to build within your children, we think, what is really important, enabling them to live in this in-between hour. When you look at a complaint psalm, you look at four things. Uh, just quickly. It's not what I'm preaching on. I just I want to show you what a complaint psalm looks like. When you look at a complaint psalm, a, a complaint psalm is built four ways. Number one, it starts with a complaint. God, I have a criticism of you. You're letting wicked people do this, and this is what I'm suffering right now. It starts with a complaint. It is not bad to complain to God could be bad to complain to somebody else but there's something wonderful about uh, complaining to God and then you give your petition I would really like you to do this God and here's what happens when people are being formed by Jesus when they pray a psalm like this I cannot tell you how many times this happened in the middle of praying like this a kaboom you get a sudden change and what happens in the sudden change Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm complaining about this. I'm asking God for that. And then kaboom, I remember something. Remember when God helped me through this? And remember when God helped me through that? And we remember when God did such and such? And all of a sudden, a change in mood comes. God, I'm complaining. I'm in pain. I'm hurting. I'm having this petition. But I also know know something about you. Sudden change of heart. You deliver us out of all our troubles that's the promise and we remember that and there's a sudden change of mood and then it ends in praise we will look at this over the summer but those four things happen in these psalms almost every one one time it doesn't end like this it doesn't end well in one of the psalms and we'll explain why that happens if if we do that particular psalm but in these psalms that's what happens this morning i want to just conclude by going over the psalm we've been working on this morning bless the lord oh my soul and all 
that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. What is he saying here? He's saying you've got to constantly punch your spirit a little bit and wake it up. There's a dullness that wants to set over you that doesn't want to bless the Lord. There's something that gets in our minds that's distracting, and we're thinking more about the afternoon than the moment we are in right now. I don't think that was happening here today, because as, as uh, Elizabeth was singing softly in that last song, I could just hear voices singing back behind me. I realize you're probably leaning in today, but sometimes you just got to say, kick yourself and say, come on, soul, get with it! Come on, get with it. You got to go. Come on, soul. You got to go. Bless the Lord. Don't forget his benefits. And he's saying if you're having some difficulty in this dull, distracted uh, time that you're in, then remember his benefits. And so they read that. Who forgives all of your iniquities? Ain't no sin he can't forgive. When you're whispering your sins out this morning, not one of them he can't forgive. He forgives all of your iniquities. If he's forgiven all of your iniquities, what's left to punish? What's left to condemn? What is left from keeping him from delivering you from all your troubles? No matter where the world goes, what is keeping him if there's no sin to judge you for? Hey, listen, he forgives all your, he heals all your diseases. You kidding me? I know people that have died with diseases. Let me just say this really clear. There is no disease in your body that he cannot heal nothing know this if a disease is going to take you out and he's going to heal you with a resurrected body he will take you by the hand and he will walk you all the way to the other side of this thing and he promises you there will be no pain I'm going to walk all the way through this with you. So even if, even if your healing is resurrection, I want to tell you, I'm going to get you through to the other side. There's a walking with Jesus and a connection that makes death easier for those who are walking with him than those who are fighting all the way to have something they want for themselves. Who redeems your life from the pit There is no difficulty you are in that he cannot deliver you from. In fact, he says he will deliver you from all your troubles. Do you know how all those complaint psalms ends? David's saying, he has delivered me from all my troubles. He delivers me in every situation. There is nothing you don't get delivered from. Nothing. In other words, when you're saying, bless the Lord, what are you supposed to kick your hiney with? Ah, remember his benefits. He's forgiven me. Whoa! I'm healed. Whoa! If I'm in a pit, he's coming after me. He's going to drag me out of that pit. He crowns you with a set. Pastor David mentioned this today with his steadfast love. What does that mean? No matter how the world turns out, no matter who is king, Democrat or president, you like him or you don't like him. The authority in your life is the steadfast, covenant, loyal love of God. And he crowns you with that, and he lets you walk in that authority. That's what, the, that's what this psalms mean. And then he goes on. Steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good. In other words, I'm so worried I'm going to be empty or miss out or lose something. It's an impossibility. His promise is, you will be full. He will satisfy you with good. Kick yourself. Come on. Do not forget his benefits. And then he says, this is so you can be transformed, renewed. Reformation take place on the inside of you. So you, (laughs) your youth is renewed like that of an eagle. In other words, for all this stuff, when we're in between and all this stuff is going on on the earth and we don't know how it's all going to settle out, we get to fly above it, seated in heavenly places with him. Look, we don't know where we're headed. I get there's a lot of anxiety out there. I get all that. But the promises of God to his people 
which for the most part, you reading this morning in Amos, was that kind of discouraging a little bit? If there's 10,000 or 1,000 or whatever it was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave 100. If there's 100, I'm going to leave 10. What he's telling you there, what he's showing you there in those passages is how many people in Israel, there are about 10%, essentially, 10% that were faithfully following him, but the 10% he was seeing all the way through. Well, what is 10%? It's a tithe. What is a tithe? It's what belongs to the Lord. What belongs to the Lord? Whatever's been devoted to him. Yeah. Be devoted to the Lord. Be his tithe. Be his tenth. Why? Because he wants to get you through whatever is coming. Look, I wouldn't lie to you. I really wouldn't. I've been back and forth all over on this stuff. I wouldn't do it. If Buddhism was right, I'd be preaching it. If Islam was right, I'd be preaching it. If anything was right, I'd be preaching it. If I could find fault with the Word of God, I'd show it to you. I don't care. I just can't find fault. I can't find a word that he's dropped. I can't pro find a promise he's missed. I went and searched them out because I've read them. And all the prophets, oh, this didn't happen and this didn't happen. And then you find historically, well, doggone it, that did happen exactly like that. God doesn't drop his word. But here's what I have discovered about him. We come to him. Now listen carefully. This is my wind-up. I'm done. He comes to us as we wait on him. And I pray, not forgetting his benefits. And he downloads me in me his word. Here's my word. Here's my guidance. Here's what I want to do. You watch him. And I pray it! Which isn't so meaningful, to be honest with you. I pray it. When I is joined with we, and we pray it! Tomorrow, it happens. Somebody should laugh at that. Because that's our problem. Tomorrow it does not happen. Why? Because his word is a seed. I'm praying, oh God, I'm in need and this is unfair and life is rotten and you're not taking care of me. And he downloads a sudden change of mood. Oh, but God, you've been good in the past. Here's what you need to pray. Here's what I'm going to do. And together we pray. Kaboom, we're praying. <laughs> Ten years down the road, God puts in the crosshairs of your life the full-grown plant of what we planted in seed a long time ago. What I've discovered about God is he's not a tomorrow. I've been tithing for a week. Nothing. I mean, I've, I've, I've tithed for a week and they've already got raises and promotions and everything else. Nothing. What do you suggest? Ten years of what? Tithing. Before what? You even understand what it's all about. Are you kidding me? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah, don't you wish you'd been tithing the last ten years? <laughs> I'm just using tithing as just an example. It's, it's, it's the small one. The devil, if he can get you to do anything, people say, we need to bring the church together in prayer. Really? We need to bring the church together in prayer. Get in local churches and pray. Because we'll pray everywhere but there. Why will we pray everywhere but there? For the same reason we only go to family reunions on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Because we have to live with these people we go to church with. And the last thing we want to do is intimately pray with them. I was just in a fight with him last week. I know we've got to drop it around the table tonight and get our agreement voices together because God wants us to plant something in the earth that's going to grow two months, three months, one year, ten years from now to church together and pray. We can't even pray in a local church and you want to pray with people you don't know. Of course you want to pray with people you don't know. Would you mind standing up for a moment, Lucas? I'll show you how this works. Just stand up for a moment. Let's pretend I don't know Lucas and I see him in church. Oh, it's so good to have you here this morning, buddy. Wow, it's so good. Welcome to Living Hope. Now, my daughter, she stand up. Okay. Oh, yeah, hi. <laughs> we had a little fight this morning, so we'll work that out later. Is that not true? 
Like I welcome him like he's one lost cousin that I haven't seen, that, you know, some wonderful guy that I don't even know. My own daughter, the people that I'm related to, the family in my own church, I avoid. That's why he says, listen, if you just get a local church together and do a little agreement prayer, you'd be shocked what would happen. Could I just tell you about the unity of church prayer? Could I just say about this in Washington County? The pastors that pray together here, uh, Pastor David can att- attest to this. We pray together just fine. We're doing just fine. Church is doing just fine. You know, you, 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 throw, you, you know, throw millions of people in a room together to pray, that's kind, of a, that's kind of a tough gig. Jesus loves it as he loves you to get together with people you're uncomfortable with and praying wow. and raise the roof and start sending wow. things way, 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 way ahead in our community. That's pretty wonderful. Can I just lean into this? There are some really incredible pastors and churches in this area. I know that's hard to believe because it just seems like we got a corner on it, but we don't. <laughs> there, and, and, and it is going so well for these guys. and these. It's going really, 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 really good. And so sometimes we're wondering, well, what's going on in the bigger church? It, it, does, it is his church. It's doing really, really well. Now, can you come together? and pray beside somebody that rubs you the wrong way. When that begins to happen, the world begins to change in a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way. I am suggesting. That wasn't a very good clap. I thought it was a good point. That's why I want to encourage you, come back tonight. I would, but I have kids. Yeah, I know, and that's largely your fault. <laughs> no one made you sleep with your wife. That was on your own. It was an accident, okay. God says, pray for wisdom. He will give it to you to figure out those things. So these kids, Tim, these children that you have, <laughs> Actually, Tim, if you watch Tim work with kids, he is such a great dad. I hate giving the dean, so I'm teasing them. They are just so awesome. <laughs> but bring your kids. Bring them, let them color not on the floor, but on paper on the floor. If they don't mind you very well, figure out something else. But let the, you, you want to know something? Some of the, you know why we have a Christmas Eve service? Because when I was a little boy, my parents always took me to Christmas Eve. You know, there's a little verse. We get that wrong sometimes. Raise a child up in the way of the Lord, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We think, well, I'm going to raise him up like I love Jesus, so um, I'm going to raise him up to love Jesus. That verse really deals with practices. Raise your children up in certain practices, and when they get old, they'll return to it. Why? Because if Jesus is in it, they'll always be drawn back to him. I love Christmas Eve service because I don't know a Christmas Eve service where we didn't come to church first and then get together with our family. My parent, I don't know what it's like not coming to church on Sunday morning. It's, it's, it's a practice. I love the table of the Lord. And when I found out Jesus wanted it every week, what a treat. Guys, I want to suggest something to you. Don't use your children as an excuse, but it's so hard. I don't know how much I'll get out of it. I don't know either, but your children will remember things. Lord Jesus, help us now, July 10th, as we seek to lead your church into prayer a new season a new day and a new hour of prayer for living hope lead us in this i would pray in jesus name amen i want to suggest this to you there will be pastoral team at the back of the building i beg of you receive prayer this morning i don't need prayer thank again my wife and i receive prayer every single Sunday. My wife, she just had surgery recently and she could have uh, lost her voice. She had all kinds of complications from it and I, I believe just because of this church and people praying her scar is healing well. She can talk, which is a blessing to me. <laughs> More than ever, which is a blessing to me. Amen. 
You guys, I want to tell you something. We have no idea how prayer is shooting in the future and getting us in the cross heirs, uh, heirs so God can work all things together to the good for those who love him or are called according to his purpose. I don't pray because I need something tomorrow. I'm praying because I'm figuring I need something 10 years from now, two months from now, in the future. Get prayer this morning. Let's stand. Lord Jesus, bless us as we worship. Bless us as we go light candles, put things on the cross, complain to you, all the things that we're going to do, and then bless us as we come back and pray tonight. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, bless you as you worship this morning. For the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens
The Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you safely and securely tucked into his loving hand. May the Lord keep you as you serve as his hands, carrying his living hope to the world around you. May the Lord be gracious and may he is gracious grace shine upon you the lord be so faithful to you may the lord bless you may the lord be gracious over your lives over your family and over the church in jesus name so many labels so many classifications, so many choices. Who am I? Who are you? Even in our own church, among our own people, is it safe to really talk to you? Lord, we pray that you would help us remember who we really are. Lord, we pray this morning that you would put the mighty name of Jesus on your people. Now we have a time of giving. I'm Luke Ayo, and we're honored to be giving the message of generosity today. It says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. We've seen some pretty interesting times this past year when it comes to the state of the world when it comes to money. These cups represent what these things looked like a year ago. So this cup here represents what our investments looked like a year ago. And Jody's going to demonstrate what's happened to our investments and 401k within the past year. We've lost quite a bit of money in the investments in 401ks. This cup here represents home prices in the past year. They've gone up. This cup represents the interest rates to buy a home. If you're looking to buy a home, you know that the price of the interest rates on homes has gone up. This cup represents the cost to buy food a year ago. And as you know, going to the grocery store is more expensive to buy food than it was a year ago. And this cup here represents gas prices. Gas prices, of course, we've all seen gas prices go up considerably in the past year. This is the state of the world, or at least the United States, when it comes to these things in the financial world. And this cup, though, this represents our tithe. Our tithe is our outward expression of our trust in the Lord to keep us safe. Everything that we get, it all comes from God. This here is holy. When this is the state of the world, it's kind of normal for some people to say, I want to pour some of this into, the, into this, or into this one maybe. Or I'm really hurting here, so I need this, or maybe I need this. But church, now is the time for us to, again, to continue to, and or start showing our trust in the Lord, because He, when we put our trust in Him, He keeps us safe. This is our outward expression to keep us safe no matter our circumstances. On the screen are ways to give. Here are your morning announcements. Good morning, Living Hope. Happy Sunday, church. This is Faith Luke. And this is Tim Black. And here are your morning announcements. Tim, what's happening? I know we always got a lot happening. Yeah, what's happening? Yeah. Rhetorical question. Tonight, tonight. We have prayer night. It is back. We're excited to get back together. Please bring the whole fam. It's going to be powerful. Bring them back. 6 p.m. Yes, prayer nights are finally back. Let's go, as Lucas would say. Let's go. That's, that's how he said it. Yeah, yeah. But 
what is also back are Hope Kids Camp, our J High Camp, our Citizens Getaway. Getaway. What's more fun for kids and the youth than spending some time together and having fun? Yes, I couldn't fun. agree more. Parents and youth, you can sign up for camp at thisishope.com and collect all the information we will need. Yes, yes. Hey, raise your hand if you were at our service in the Grove last week. I was Tim. I had that. I was, I was there too. All right, it was fun. Well, Faith, I get to announce that we have another service in the Grove happening July 31st. Yes! Of course, it's BYOC. That's yep. bring your own chair. Okay. Yep. Bring your own chair. We'll have food and drinks provided, right? What a great way to invite a new friend to church. Yes, great way. Hey, it really is. Like, who wouldn't want free food, worship, and a message outside, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. But too. we gotta wait till July. We got, okay, we gotta wait till, yeah. wait till free food. Yeah. There might be stuff outside. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll see that. All right. So, with all that being said, <laughs> please stand to your feet. What a morning. Hello? Is this on? Okay, all right. Uh, where are you going to be tonight? Here, 6 p.m., right? So put it on the calendar, put it on your phone, whatever you got to do. And the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace that his name would be known in all the earth. Amen. Thank you guys for coming today. You guys are dismissed. We look forward to seeing you tonight at 6.